Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. In this video, I shall be reviewing the effectiveness of all shotgun weapons in Hunt Showdown. I'm going to dive into their stats and also discuss how they behave in the field along with some tactics around how I recommend using them. Now if you need a primer on how shotguns function, I made a video that highlights many of their features last week and the link is in the description. But the basics are as follows. Shotguns shoot 14 pallets each time you pull the trigger. These pallets spread further apart at longer ranges and also they lose damage at longer ranges. This means that range drop off for shotguns is extra severe more so than any other weapon type. I tested pallet spread for all of the different shotguns and created visuals that look like this. This represents 4 shotgun shots from the same gun combined, so 56 pallets all together at a range of around 10 meters. We can then compare how this appears on a player target or compare against other shotgun spreads. Also, shotguns cause bleed, but only when they deal over a certain threshold of damage in a single shot and only when you are close enough to the target, otherwise no bleed. The exact mechanics of this are unknown. Again, I recommend watching my previous video because you'll learn a lot about shotguns. Let's get started with the basic Romero 77. It is unlocked at rank 1 and costs $3400. Now this gun is great. It has the highest damage and range of any shotgun along with the tightest spread. This means that it can reliably one-shot hunters, when aimed properly, out to a range of 15 meters, which is the highest of any shotgun. It also has 12 reserve shots. The issue is that the Romero only gets one shot, then you have to go through a 3 second reload animation. So it is one very nice shot, followed by some downtime. Now if you can make that shot count, then this weapon is brutal. If your opponent is weakened already, or if you have the ability to follow up with your secondary, then it can be effective even beyond 15 meters. For a lot of people, this is seen as one of the best shotguns, even though it is a starting weapon. My advice when using the Romero is to always use it around cover, so that you have some degree of protection while reloading. And take your time to aim those shots. Because the spread is tight, which is great, if your aim is just a little bit off, it means that most if not all of your pallets are going to miss your target, especially if you're really close to them. Now the Romero has a number of variants. Let's start with the Romero Talon at $5900. The Talon is, for all intents and purposes, identical to the base Romero in performance of the actual shotgun shot. It has slightly more sway, but this doesn't really matter because it's a shotgun, and you will rarely be ADSing anyway. The Talon has a Talon melee attachment. This deals 135 damage on a heavy melee attack, plus it will cause bleeding. Now this will one-shot hunters to the head, and it will consume a third of your stamina bar. It swings in a wide arc, it is clunky and takes a while to wind up compared to smaller melee tools. The Talon is not a good melee attachment in the grand scheme of things, but in the event that you need to whack someone after landing only half of your shotgun pellets, it will do the job much better than a base Romero. Just make sure that you take some dusters to deal with those pesky immolators, because you will no longer be able to do a blunt bash attack with your buttstock. Next we have the Romero hand cannon at $26. Now by reducing the Romero to a medium slot weapon, you sacrifice range and power, meaning that reliable one shot is reduced to around 8 meters. However, you're not sacrificing much in the way of spread, as the spread pattern remains really tight compared to other shotguns we will look at later on. This means that the hand cannon is reliable, and when it's used within its effective range it does not rely on random luck to hit pallets, making it a very strong sidearm shotgun when paired with a long rifle primary weapon. Now I wouldn't run this as a primary however, as the range is just too limited compared to the other options. Also remember that as a medium slot weapon, the melee damage has been severely reduced, so you will not be able to reliably follow up by bashing with this gun. The Romero hand cannons also have only 10 shots in reserve as opposed to the normal Romero's 12. The final Romero variant is the Romero hatchet at $62. This is what happens if you take a hand cannon, you shave down the barrel a little bit more, and you screw on an axe head, and in theory, it's a really cool weapon. The hatchet attachment deals the same 135 heavy rending damage as the Talon, but the light swing deals 90 rending damage and is also very fast, and it consumes a small amount of stamina. But the melee here isn't the issue. That's quite good. Rather, it's the spread. The extra short barrel takes the decent spread of a normal hand cannon, which is this, and turns it into this one of the most dispersed spreads in the entire game. This means that the shotgun part of the weapon is only useful when you are right in the enemy's face, or when you need to deal minimal damage to a weak and escaping target. In order to use this effectively, do not think of it as a shotgun with a melee attachment, 
rather think of it as a machete with a shotgun attachment. And don't rely on that shotgun blast too much at all, rather rely on the quite decent melee attack. The next shotgun that you will unlock is the Coldwell Rival 78, which unlocks at rank 18 for $100. Now this is a very simple change from the Romero. It has slightly worse damage and range, as well as a larger spread pattern as seen here. However, it has two barrels that can be fired one after the other extremely quickly, and both are reloaded in only 4 seconds. It holds only 8 reserve shells as well. Essentially, what this means is that at close range, you can fire one barrel to kill a target and still have another ready for his partner, or just as a backup if you whiffed too many pallets on your opening shot. At longer ranges, you can fire both barrels to match or even exceed the Romero damage at 15 meters. The main cost here is that with a wider spread, the weapon is less reliable than the Romero at longer range, so depending on your luck, even two shots at 15 meters may not achieve what a Romero can do in one. Now I love this weapon for pushing inside buildings, rushing targets, and getting into skirmishes at very, very close range. This is what it excels at. Just make sure you're not stuck in the open while reloading. Now the Coldwell Rival has a single variant, the medium slot Coldwell Rival hand cannon for $85. As expected, it sacrifices damage and range along with an increased pallet spread as we can see here. However, it does allow you to use it as a sidearm, which is a great surprise weapon. It only reliably one-taps enemies around 7 meters, however you can stretch that to around 10 meters if you're unloading both barrels and not getting super unlucky with your pallets. I really like using this as a backup weapon with Quartermaster when I'm using a Labelle or a Mosin, as the last thing most people expect from a long rifle user is the ability to whip out a shotgun and dispense a wall of 28 pallets in less than a second. It allows you to repel players pushing you at close range with melee, which is a weakness when holding a long rifle, and it also gives you the ability to capitalize on opportunities to push buildings, which is normally very risky for long rifles even with a fan-in pistol. Let's move on to the Spectre 1882. Now this is a pump action shotgun which many players find highly unreliable. So you might be surprised to find that on paper, it's actually rather strong. It unlocks at rank 58 for $188, and it has a similar pallet spread to the Romero, but with slightly reduced range and damage. The Spectre's 5 round magazine should make it a powerhouse. It carries 10 shells in reserve, but the issue is that a slow fire rate makes you wait just over a second before shooting again. Now this feels like an eternity in Hunt. It tempts you to be out in the open for too long trying to pull off those follow-up shots, whereas with a Romero, you just shoot and then focus on avoiding damage and getting to cover until you're reloaded and ready to go again. The Spectre and its variants also require the bullet grubber trait to reload fully without wasting ammo. I think many players are just bad with the Spectre because they don't really know the rhythm of that strange fire rate, and then they don't take the time to properly aim up their shots. Now with a tight pallet spread like the Spectres, aim is even more important, because if your aim is off, then most of your pallets will probably miss. The Spectre is a great team sweeper if you catch a duo or even a trio unawares, as it allows you to output a lot of fire from further away than say, the Crown and King, but I still think it probably underperforms for its price. The Spectre variants seem to suffer even more from these issues. The Bayonet version for $223 gives you a 112 heavy melee attack, this attack has high range, it will one-tap to the head, but it does not cause bleed and it uses a fair bit of stamina. Now yes, this is good for following up a wounded target, but you lose out on that tight spread, as the bayonet pallet distribution is far wider as we can see here. Now this is good in quick play as a way to have both a melee tool for AI and a shotgun for that end of round camp fest, but it is outclassed by so many other shotguns that I struggle to recommend it. You're better off with a normal Spectre and then having a knife to swap to. Now finally we have the Spectre Compact for $164, and this suffers from a problematic design philosophy. This weapon has lower damage and range, and also a wide spread, although it's not as bad as the Caldwell Hand Cannon in that regard. However, it takes forever to fire that second shot as per the full Spectre, so it seems to encourage close range play, but the fire rate means that if you do miss at that range, you're probably not going to survive long enough to get off your follow up shot. Now compared to the Caldwell Rival Hand Cannon, it actually takes longer to fire off 4 shots than the Caldwell does, and the Caldwell can fire those first 2 shots off much, much faster, so it's hard to recommend when that other weapon is available. The Spectre Compact also only has 8 shells in reserve. The next shotgun is the Crown and King Auto 5. 
This is the high-end shotgun which unlocks at rank 82 for a steep 600 hunt dollars. It's a semi-automatic 5-shot wonder with only 6 shots in reserve that has similar palette spread to the Caldwell Rival, but significantly better range and damage. This means that although strong up to around 12 meters, it is still significantly weaker per shot than the basic Romero. What it does have is the ability to rapidly follow up with 4 additional shots. The recoil on the Crowning King is high, so if you spam those shots quickly without readjusting your aim, you might get a lot of hit markers, but land very few pallets and leave your opponent standing. So make sure you line up your shots correctly and do not panic with this gun. I think that this weapon is certainly strong, but it's probably a bit overrated. It will often need 2 or 3 shots to do what a Romero can do in one, and it is magnitudes more expensive. However, if you have the money to spare, it is a damn effective shotgun and it can amplify its range by stacking multiple shots on targets out to 15 or even 20 meters. Anything beyond that however, and you might as well be tickling them. So that brings us to the end, hang on, there's actually one more shotgun. The Lamat Mark II has a shotgun secondary fire for when you really really need it. It has terrible spread and is comparable to the Romero hatchet but it has a long reload and very limited reserve ammo. Now this is a panic shotgun which is not that effective, but it has extremely limited range, and it can make you feel so badass when you use it to plaster someone's brains all over the wall. Now I know some people will say in the comments that I've missed out on covering the shot bolt. Don't worry, I'm working on a crossbow video that will be out next week for you guys, so keep tuned for that. Please let us know what your favourite shotgun is in the comments below. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you want to stick around. And you can now come and follow us on our new Instagram page to stay up to date on all of our news, videos and live streams. So please follow at 4FS Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. This is Ascendance and good luck out there in the swamps.